Okay, so here's the big things that are the types of data that we play with. So we've got IP addresses. Now the IP addresses come from everywhere. Threat intelligence, blacklist, whitelist, reputation monitoring. Now we've got tools, right, firewalls, proxies, right, uh, for example, bro, there are different types of intrusion detection systems. You can feed all that data into Splunk and it'll tell you what IPs are good or bad. And we can use Splunk to, to, to check into that, say, hey, you know, what IPs have had this type of indicator? We can have network artifacts and patterns, net flows, packet captures, active connections, historic network data. This is where you're gonna see stuff like Splunk, um, NetFlow. Um, I'll show you guys how to import PCAPs in, and I'll show you how to, how to import flow data into Splunk. So I'll definitely cover how to do some of that. Then you've got activity stuff, um, you know, DNS, you're going to get a lot of good juju out of DNS, right? Being able to look for things like open DNS and um, bro IDS to figure out if you're making DNS connections to bad places. Um, that'll definitely be something helpful. So here's your typical data sources. Hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit of a feel of how you can pull in data into Splunk. You've got third-party um, intel, open source blacklist, internal threat intelligence. This is basically like what IPs do I know are good and bad? I mean, that's really what that is. Threat intelligence, for the most part, tends to be IPs and hashes. What are known bad IP addresses? What are known bad hashes? I'll give you an example like maybe like rules.emergingthreats.net. So this um, rules.emergingthreats.net, this is an example of open source intel. Um, there's another one called OTX, Open Threat Exchange. This is an example of that, you know, same thing, what, what they're calling community intelligence. So if you look here, you see how you get um, IDS rules and block rules, like you can jump in here and grab block rules. And maybe you want um, emerging threat bot control and uh, command and control. See how it's just a list of IPs. Maybe you want, for example, Suricata or Snort rules. And basically you'll see how it's basically a Snort rule, right? So this IP address doing this, right? Or this type of data signature. So like I'll jump back and I'll show you guys some Snort rules. So you can go open no GPL. Maybe I want Snort. And maybe I want, here's Emerging Threats, All Rules. And now you can see how it's like, here's an ActiveX, you know, Adobe Reader exploit. And you can see what it's looking for, right? PCRE, Perl compatible, regular expressions, this object string, it's got a class ID, right? And if it sees that, it's telling you, hey, it's this exploit. That's what they're talking about here. Open source blacklist, open source... IOCs, anything like that. Or maybe you want to tell your Splunk, uh, maybe you want to tell your security product to feed into Splunk. So your firewall, IDS, IPS, your DNS, your email, your proxy, NetFlow, all of your network devices, you want them to send the logs and events to Splunk. Or you can do the same thing with all your endpoints, your antivirus, IPS, host-based firewalls, malware platforms like antivirus or, or uh, endpoint solutions, um, you know, your DHCP, you know, any of your patch and stuff, all this can be sent to Splunk. And then on the access level, if you want to do like Active Directory and, you know, database access, VPN logs, single sign-on solutions, you know, all your authentication solutions, they can send, you can send the events from those to Splunk as well.